With this video, we're going to look at the ideas of tangent vectors to curves and the idea of null and non null curves. Here's our manifold, and here's some curve on that manifold, specified by x mu of lambda. Lambda is a parameterization variable, it could be anything, proper time, or some other aspect, some, maybe perhaps some other affine uh, variable. x of mu is the curve. X of mu lambda basis vector z mu related to the manifold itself. We're going to have some at some point p, any point p on the curve. It's entirely general. We're going to have some tangent vector, and we'll call that t. For the tangent vector to the curve x of lambda, shown in blue on a previous diagram. Um, so at some point p, using the coordinate basis vectors at that same point, our tangent vector will be given by the derivative of the coordinates of the curve uh, and the basis vector e mu. The scalar product, just as in flat space, will be t dot t is dx mu d lambda e subscript mu dotted with itself. These, this inner product here gives us the coefficients of the metric. Uh, dx mu d lambda dx mu. And here we go, we get the g mu dx mu d lambda term. The magnitude of length of tangent vector t to the curve at any point p is n given by mod t as the square root of t dot t, the square root of these, this expression here, uh, square root of this, it looks like the metric, divided by the d lambda, is ds squared, square root of d lambda, ds being the metric length, where ds is the distance measured at p and along the curve that corresponds to the interval change equal to d lambda. So starting at p, we're going to measure the distance along the curve according to whatever length d lambda is. That's what ds will give us. So a null curve has a tangent vector that is of zero length at all points along the curve. And this means that the distance ds between any two points on the curve is zero. So the condition for a null curve is that mod t of the uh, tangent vector is zero, this expression here. So let's consider a photon moving in 4D space-time, and the magnitude of the tangent vector is what we're interested in. So let's use the coordinates x0, x1, x2, x3, related to the manifold, ct, x, y, z, right? Lambda is t, where t is time, and the basis vectors are the property that the time-like basis vector is e0 dot e0 minus 1, and the spatial parts, e alpha dot e beta, obeys the um, Kronecker delta rule. And they give us the, uh, again, they give us the coefficients of the metric. Um, okay, so let's expand that out. Mod t is the square root of this. Expand these out. There's no cross terms here. Um, yeah. The four-dimensional Minkowski space is flat, so we have no cross terms. We just have a diagonal matrix, if you like. So we get G00, G11, G22, G33. All right. When we expand that out, we get this. Um, we common denominator here, dt squared, and this just looks like a speed, doesn't it? So the distance squared over time squared over a photon, so that's the speed of light. Uh, that's the speed of the photon. Minus c squared plus c squared gives us zero. So the, the modulus of the tangent vector, the magnitude of the tangent vector is zero. So photons travel null curves. So the photon through space time is that of a null curve, since the magnitude of the tangent vector is zero. So the null curve, as taken by photon, is one for which the distance ds between any two points on the curve is zero. All right. Against that, a non-null curve now is one for which the modulus of t is not equal to zero, and all particles with mass follow non-null curves through space-time. So if you consider an example of an atom or a spaceship or any other thing, any, any object moving through uh, uh, space-time, that's constrained to move at less than the speed of light, and if we imagine one that carries its own clock, so it measures its own proper time, tau. Let's have a look at what that says. says. So let's use the coordinates here, x0, x1, x2, x3, is ct, x, y, z, same as before. Lambda now, we're going to use its tau, the proper time as measured by the crew on the spaceship or the particle holding onto its own clock as it travels through space-time. 
So tau is a proper time as measured by the mass. The basis vectors again have the property that the you know, product, scalar product, negative one for the time-like basis vectors and for the spatial ones it's just plus one. Right. Metric terms or the coefficients of the metric terms are generated by g alpha beta is e alpha dot e beta. Again, there we go. Uh, we also have the Lorentz gamma factor here, the Lorentz boost, and we also have the relationship between coordinate time and proper time, and um, and that's related by the gamma factor, the Lorentz factor. Uh, v here in this expression is the relative velocity between the observers in the different frames. So if someone watching the spaceship go by on Earth measures t, while someone on the spaceship measures tau, the proper time. So the observer on Earth measures the coordinate time, and the person on the spaceship passing Earth, let's say, would be measuring proper time, because the spaceship observer would be carrying their own clock, and they would be measuring a proper time. Uh, the metric ds squared is minus c squared d tau squared is this expression here, familiar? Flat space. Alright, now, mod t square root of this expression, expanding this out, and we get minus c squared dt d tau, all squared, that'll have just turn out to be gamma squared, that part there is just gamma squared. This we've seen before, common denominator d tau squared. We can replace the d tau squared by the relationship we've on the previous page, which is this one over here. Coordinate time is gamma times the proper time, or the increments of the intervals, small intervals. Okay, we place that there, so we get gamma squared on dt squared here. When we expand that out, we can also replace dx squared plus dy squared plus dz squared is minus c squared d tau plus c squared dt, and that comes from this expression in the metric here. This part here can be expressed in terms of minus c squared d tau squared plus this bit added over here. When we do that, we get minus c squared gamma squared minus c squared gamma squared times d tau squared dt squared, which we've already seen is just gamma squared, this bit here, or well, 1 on gamma squared, sorry, minus c squared times gamma squared times 1 on gamma squared, so the gamma squareds cancel here, plus c squared gamma squared, so this one cancels with that one, and we're left with just minus c squared. So this whole thing is a constant, albeit not a real constant, but we can see that t dot t is minus c squared, in other words, or the square of the modulus of t is minus c squared, but either way it's not zero, so it follows, so particles with mass again follow non-null curves is the point that we're trying to make here. Just as we pointed out here earlier, all particles with mass, all particles with mass follow non-null curves through space-time. And that's what this expression here is showing. Alright, well that's that.